So what is the point getting all this information, all these signals, if we cannot remember them? Let me show you how we remember this, the signals we have received. So cellular and molecular basis of memory. So there are special proteins in the cell that can bind calcium. One of the, actually the first proteins, calcium binding proteins that was discovered is troponin. Troponin is a protein that helps muscle contraction. There's another type of protein called calmodulin. This calmodulin protein binds four calcium ions and it is these, when it binds the calcium ions, it goes through a conformational change. In this new conformation, it can activate or inactivate other proteins. So this is a very important protein. About 1% of the protein mass of a cell is calmodulin. It binds these calcium ions in cooperative binding, just like we saw in PKA. First one calcium ion binds, it causes a conformational change. The other calcium ion binding site is exposed. The next calcium ion binds. Ultimately, when calmodulin has bound four calcium ions, it can do several things. One of the things it does is it can activate an enzyme or class of enzymes called calmodulin dependent protein kinases or CAM kinases. These kinases, as the name suggests, add a phosphate group to the substrate proteins. And they add the phosphate group to specific serine and threonine residues inside in the protein molecule. CAM kinases also phosphorylate light chain of myosin in smooth muscle cells, which also causes contraction. One of the targets for calmodulin is CAM kinase 2. It is another enzyme which is present in specific neurons, specific parts of brains. It is about 2% of certain in certain regions of brain. This CAM kinase 2 has two important domains an inhibitory domain and a catalytic domain. Inhibitory domain, when this protein is inactive, is bound to this catalytic domain and prevents it from functioning, which is the catalytic domain, as the name suggests, attaches a phosphate group to the target proteins or the substrate. So when calmodulin becomes activated, it binds, two, it binds four calcium ions and subsequently it binds the CAM2 kinase. When it binds CAM2 kinase, CAM2 kinase has a conformational change. It releases the, the inhibitory domain of this molecule, releases the catalytic domain. The catalytic domain, once it is activated, as it has been released, the first thing it does, it phosphorylates the inhibitory domain right here. So when this phosphate group is attached, to the inhibitory domain, the inhibitory domain cannot inhibit the function of the catalytic domain, even if the calmodulin has been released or is no longer in active form. So let's say that there was an influx of calcium ion. So this that influx increased that increased calcium ion concentration activated calmodulin, but now the, the signal is gone, the calcium levels have fallen again. Calmodulin once it releases the calcium ions, will become inactive. But this protein, this kinase, it still remembers that it was activated because it is now attached to this phosphate group. This phosphate group which is attached, it, st it is still preventing the catalytic domain of this molecule from interacting with inhibitory domain of this molecule. So this is how this molecule is, this is a basis of molecular basis of memory the cell is remembering that it encountered a calcium influx in response to a particular signal that it received sometime way back. It, experiments have also shown that CAM kinase 2, for some reason, it is mutated in mice. They have poor memory. Here is another experiment that suggests that CAM2 kinase is an important protein in storing memory. Another thing we do to our nervous system, sort of a little bit of an abuse, perhaps, we subject it to caffeine. Caffeine has a structure similar to adenosine. 
I hope you can see the similarity here. Adenosine is produced by neurons. Once the neurons get tired, they produce adenosine. Adenosine binds specific receptors on the specific cells of brain that results in decreased brain activity and which causes drowsiness and we fall asleep. So when we want to cheat, that we don't want to sleep, we have to stay alert because we have an exam due or an assignment due, we drink coffee or caffeine, that caffeine binds the receptors, adenosine receptors on brain, it prevents adenosine from binding those receptors, caffeine binding to those receptors does not cause the conformational change of these receptors and it prevents adenosine, the natural ligand from binding it. So it is this caffeine is acting as an antagonist which we have already talked about. So this is how we keep ourselves alert by drinking caffeine in the form of coffee or tea or perhaps coke so we can stay alert and do the required job. So this is one of the ways, simple ways how we manipulate our signaling system every day without knowing what we are doing.